in the next few weeks, I'm going to go through the scriptures. I'm going to give you detailed information of who the Antichrist is. Because I want to tell you something, he is alive and well today. He is on the world scene as I'm speaking right now. The false prophet is here right now as I'm speaking. The new world order is going to be ushered in very soon. We already see the shockwave of, of tomorrow. We already see the pathways of tomorrow. Everything that the scripture talks about is already becoming visible and obvious to those who know the scriptures. Who is the Antichrist? I'm going to go on every scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little, building up a complete profile of the Antichrist. A complete profile of the Antichrist. Because he will be revealed not by human speculation. He will be revealed by scripture. The scripture reveals the Antichrist. Where he is, who he is, how he's going to take over the world, when and how. It's all in scripture. And in the next few weeks, we'll go through everything. So that you will not be deceived. Because we are in the age of deception. Fake news. Misinformation. Disinformation. Lies. The church is under attack. We need to pray for our brethren in San Antonio. We need to lift them up in prayer. Because the people of God are being threatened by the enemy. That the devil doesn't know one thing. That we know everything that he's going to do. That we are ready for him. Pre-warned, pre-armed. We're armed with the knowledge. My people perish. For lack of knowledge. Why will the church go through these difficult times and be caught up in the anxieties and the fears? It's because they don't know what time it is. They don't know the truth. The truth will set them free and prepare them for the greatest time in the history of the church. Because the best of times are here and the worst of times are here. We, the children of God, need to know the heart of the Father. What is God saying? What is God saying? It is my prayer that all your friends, your enemies, your family will come and find out because what I'm talking about is in our immediate future. The Antichrist, the false prophet, is actually rising up onto the world stage because their time has come. Now you better know from scripture to be able to discern what's happening around you because it's the age of deception. Everything that you see is not the way it is. We're living through the biggest conspiracy, the mystery of iniquity. It was here and it's coming to its, its flowering. It's coming to its fruition. It's coming to, to, to its maturity. It's here to manifest the Antichrist. Who is he? This is what I'm going to share with you beginning this Sunday. Who is he? Who is he? will take us a couple of weeks. Then we'll talk about where is he? Then we're going to talk about how is he going to take over the world? And establish the one world government, one world religion, one world currency, a universal PIN, personal identification number that will be given to everybody based upon 666. What is 666? How will all these things happen and where and when? And how will we as the people of God survive and thrive during that time? You need to know all these things. Because these things were written for us, the terminal generation. We will live in the final days of this earth before the king comes with the kingdom. I said before the king comes with the kingdom. The king is coming with the kingdom. And we, the sons of the kingdom, are about to rule and reign together with Christ. 
That's why this is the greatest news over this side of eternity. Because God is fixing to give you the authority and he's fixing to give you the kingdom. And you are being prepared for the greatest manifestation of the sons of God. You know, the anointing that's coming, it's coming in measures that has never happened before. The glory that's coming has never come on the earth before to the degree that we're going to see. We're going to see the, the, the full glory of the kingdom of God. And we're going to see the, 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 the darkest days. It's going to get darker. And the light's going to shine brighter. That's why we are on the winning side. We are on the victory side. We are the chosen of the Father. We are the elect of the Father. We are the ones that God chose to be alive during this hour. The Antichrist. Who is he? He is, number one, the manifestation of Lucifer in the body. The incarnate of the son of Satan. As God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The devil, the dragon, the antichrist, the false prophet. Because the devil mimics. God, he has no originality. He copies what God is doing, and he wants to sabotage God in what he's doing. That is why we know everything he's going to do, because whatever he's going to do is try to mimic what God's going to do, because God's about to establish the new world order on the earth, the kingdom of God on the earth. The devil comes first with a false universal kingdom to mimic the coming kingdom, the pseudo Christ, the false Christ, who come first to try to take over because he knows God's about to take over, and the devil says, I'm going to take over before you take over because he cannot create his own kingdom. He cannot do anything except follow what God is doing and tries to destroy the plan of God. But you, we know he cannot. Stop what God has said. That means you cannot be stopped in these last days. Because he said we are more than conquerors in these last days. We, you and me, are more than conquerors. We have already overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Because we love not our lives unto death. The Antichrist is the manifestation of the devil himself. Is the physicality of the ancient enemy of God, the devil himself. Jesus was the manifestation in flesh and blood of God. And the Antichrist is the manifestation of Satan in flesh and blood. Because God chose to redeem this earth, the reclamation of this planet through the man called Jesus. The devil also says, I will send my own man, my own son, and he will come on the earth. As Jesus came on the earth to save the world, the Antichrist will come on the earth to destroy the earth. As Jesus healed, the devil will come in his son, the Antichrist, to destroy the earth. He is a He's a counterfeit, and he is opposite to everything that God does. He does the opposite. So we know everything he's going to do because as we see what God is doing in the redemption, in the reclamation of this earth, we see the devil in his trying to stop God and destroy the earth. As Jesus Christ ministered for 42 months, three and a half years, the Antichrist will be on earth manifested because Jesus was on the earth 33 years, but only manifested in three and a half years. The Antichrist is here. He will be manifested in the last seven years of the treaty that's coming. I said the treaty is coming. The seven-year treaty is coming. It's being negotiated right now. The four beasts, the quartet, as Daniel tells us, 
is here on earth, and the quartet, as Daniel says, is already engaged with Israel. In that quartet is the Antichrist. One of the signatories in the quartet, the four beasts that will be on the earth, one of them is the man of sin. Scripture tells us clearly without ambiguity. It says there will be four beasts, meaning four entities that will be engaged in the peace negotiations and the resolving of the Palestinian issue. And they will sign a treaty, and one of the signatories on it will be the son of perdition, the Antichrist. The question here is, who is he? Number one, he is not a normal human being like you and me. Who is he? He is the devil incarnate in human body. Number two, he has been here before. Incarnate in the human body. Now that's the first thing you need to, I need you to underline. He has been here before. Incarnate in the human body. Who is the Antichrist? The scripture calls him the son of perdition. That is the biblical description of the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin. The son of perdition, the man of sin, has been here incarnate, just like Jesus was incarnate in the body. He was also incarnate in the body before. He manifested himself on the earth before. We are in the days when all the mysteries that have been hidden through the ages will be made known to the sons of men. That nothing will remain hidden. All things will be revealed, as the scripture says. Will be revealed to the apostles and prophets of the end of time. That all things may be made known. So that the people of God may be prepared for the hour of their testing. And God says, I'll keep you away, not take you away. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. I'll keep you away. He doesn't say, I'll take you away. He says, I'll keep you away. The man of sin has been around because the devil always follows God's Spartan and tries to counterfeit parallel. He's always parallel doing the thing that will sabotage what God is doing. As we're talking about the greatest anointing coming on the earth, the gates of hell are going to be opened and every foul, evil demon is going to come out. There has never been an inversion of the demonic that, that we are about to see. Why? Because the God of heaven is pouring his spirit with that measure on the sons of men. And the devil is going to pour out his spirit upon the sons of perdition. So there is coming an outpouring both of the supernatural divine and the evil supernatural on the earth, a confrontation right now on this planet, in these days. That's why you need to understand the things that pertain to the end of days. That you may be prepared for the greatest showdown on the planet. The pathways of tomorrow have already begun. We're seeing it everywhere. The conflicts have already begun. The line has already been drawn in the sand. The battle for the future of the church of Jesus Christ has already begun. The falling away has already begun. Because the son of perdition, the devil incarnate in a human body has come back. And I'll talk about where he has been, when he came, and why he has not been around, and why he is around now. Who is he? He is the second person of the demonic trinity, the dragon, the antichrist, the false prophet. When Jesus came the first time, he was incarnate in the human body. The devil sent his son incarnate in the human body. And I'm going to show you from scripture that when Jesus was born, the son of Satan was born also. And when Jesus was ministering, 
He was right there to find out everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen. And I'm going to show you from scripture that what has happened is going to happen again. Why was he here? Because the devil heard that Jesus Christ was born. So he quickly sent his son, go down there and be around so you can find out what he's all about. Because he's, this son of God is coming to reclaim the earth because the conflict, what is the conflict? What is the mystery of iniquity? The conflict and the mystery of iniquity has to do with one thing and one thing only. God created Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he gave them the authority to rule the earth. And the devil says, no, men will not rule the earth. I will rule the earth. Man has no, he's made out of dirt. I don't want him to rule the earth. I will rule the earth. That's why immediately in the garden, he went to Eve and deceived her in order to take from Adam the control of this planet. He is the God of this world, or the political, economic systems of the world. He rules them. That's why he told Jesus, look at all the things that I rule. He didn't talk about the physical. The physical earth belongs to the Lord. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. But he's talking about the political systems, the economic systems, the systems that run the world, the cultures of man. Those he controlled. And when Jesus came to take back this earth, the devil sent his son too. He said, go check out what he's doing and see how we can stop him. That's when the mystery of iniquity was manifested in the days of Jesus. It was there before the days of Jesus as we shall see how this conflict of how the devil does not want you and me to have dominion on the earth. How he wants dominion on the earth. From the very beginning, he couldn't believe that God who created man out of dirt and give man out of dirt the universe. He's like, how could you do that? We are greater than humans. We want that control. And God said, no, I'm giving it to Adam and Eve. It's theirs. This earth belongs to them. That is why we'll see through the centuries how the devil has been trying to take over this earth and destroy this earth. Because if he can't have it, he wants to destroy it. He is the son of perdition. Who is the Antichrist? The son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come Unless the falling away comes first, a lukewarm, compromised church. Seeker friendly. Salvation without repentance. A church where there is no preaching of holiness unto the Lord. Let me say this to you. Without holiness, no man can see God. Without holiness, no man can see God. We have diluted the gospel. We talk about the love of God, not the wrath of God. We talk about his love and not his righteousness. There is no fear of God in the people of God. The church has already fallen away. It's now not an organism, but an organization. Because the church of Jesus Christ is an organism. He is the head. And we are the body, a living organism. Not an organization made by man, controlled by man. We're living in the days of the falling away of the church. The reformation is over. The church is compromised. The church only now talks about inner faith. It's all about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. If you talk about holiness, you are a hater. 
If you say there's only one way and it's Jesus and you're not inclusive, you are a hater. You know what they think of me? I need your prayers. They hate me. The devil's trying to destroy me physically, financially. He's coming against me in every direction. What he wants to do is to silence me. He say, don't prepare the generation for the coming of the king of kings. I need your prayers. I need your support. Because the church is lukewarm. They don't want to hear me. They get upset when they come to hear me. Because they want to be entertained. The falling away has taken place. We're living through the falling away of the church. Because the man of sin is about to be revealed. The son of perdition. That identifies the antichrist. That is the biblical identification of the antichrist. Underline that. He has many other names. We'll deal with those names. But this is the key to understanding who the antichrist is. He's the son of perdition. The only one in scripture ever called the son of perdition. The only one that will ever be called the son of perdition. The lawless king. The willful king. The man of sin. The son of perdition. The son of perdition is Satan incarnate in a human body. And he was incarnate in the human body before, and I'll show you from scripture. Because Jesus speaks about the son of perdition. While I was with them in the world, he's talking about the disciples, I kept them in your name. This is in his prayer in John 17. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them except the son of perdition. Who is the Antichrist? Son of perdition. Jesus said, I kept all the other disciples except one guy, the son of perdition. Why was he sent? He was sent to check on Jesus, to find out what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. So he was incarnate, just as Jesus was incarnate, he was incarnate in the human body, and he hung out with Jesus. I mean, you know that the devil goes to church. He loves being with spiritual people, religious people. He, he, he hangs out there like because that's how he finds out what's going to happen. That's how he finds out, oh, the sons of God are going to be manifested. Hey, guys, I just heard them say the sons of God are going to be manifested. Watch out. They, they, they're coming somewhere. He, 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 gets, he, he gets the information from us because he's not all-knowing. He listens to you. So when you are speaking about all the complaining and griping, that's how he gets to know the things that will hurt you the most, and he will increase that. If it's finances, he'll put you through hell. If it's about family, he'll put you through hell. If it's physical, he'll put you through hell because he's listening to you. Because he doesn't know everything that's inside of you because he is not God. And all these demons, all they do is gather intelligence. They are gathering intelligence. And so he was there to gather the intelligence and hang out with Jesus, kind of find out oh, how these things are going. How are you going to take over this planet? When are you going to do it? You came the first time. Is this the time you're going to do it? That's why his name was Judas Scariot. The word Scariot means actually terrorist. It means the man of the sword. He was, he, he was a man of war. He was a terrorist. So why? Because he wanted a physical takeover of the planet in order for God not to take over the spirit of man to create a new humanity, a new creation. He didn't want that. He says, no, don't worry about it. Let's just get a kingdom going without born again. We don't want the born again thing. We, we want to do it the natural way, overthrow the Romans. Let's get a kingdom going, the physical, the political. That's why he hung around with Jesus and stole the money. Each time they put the money in, and he will go out to the, to the Sanhedrin to talk about Jesus, that he's not doing it right. 
How many of you know that he that, he that is, he is hear what I'm about to say? The Antichrist, he's into the Jewish thing. And he's into the Jewish thing big way. Why? Because God is into the Jewish thing big way. The kingdom will come back to Jerusalem. And the, the, it, that's why he's going to go there. It's all about Israel. The whole pathways globally are all leading to one place, Jerusalem. Because the devil knows that that's where the kingdom is going to come. And so he's going to be ahead in order to create a false messiah in Jerusalem. That's why you follow Jesus. Hang out with Jesus. Jesus said, Daddy, I kept those you gave me. But there was a, another guy here. The son of perdition has been checking out everything. And I told, him, I told him everything on the Mount of Olives. Matthew 24. I told him everything. Everything that's going to happen. I detailed it out for him. And he was taking notes. He understood everything. Jesus told everything that's going to happen on the Mount of Olives. He said, this is, the, this, is, this, is, this is the game plan. So he gave him the game plan on the Mount of Olives. And the devil's like, this is what I've been wanting, to know your game plan so I could be ahead of you and stop you. The son of perdition. Talking about the son of perdition. Now this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entails gushed out. Whew. Whew. That old demon, that old devil, that was incarnate in the body of Judas, at the end, it broke open, bastard his whole being, and it's got out. The son of perdition. Yet go back to his own place. To the bottomless pit. Where God put a, a time limit on him. That he won't come back. <laughs> because when he gushed out. He had a spiritual confrontation with Jesus in hell. And he took the keys of death and hell from the devil with his son Judas, the son of perdition, the spirit of the son of perdition, which is the devil incarnate in his son, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, in his first coming. Jesus came first time and went away. The son of perdition, the false messiah, came the first time and is coming back the second time. Why? Because Jesus came the first time, so he came the first time. Jesus went away, he's been away. Jesus coming back, and the devil is coming back. Because he always tries to have this counterfeit, the devil's son, Lucifer's son, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He has many other names that we'll go into to describe him to detail everything so that when you see him, you know who he is. He fought Jesus when he was on earth. He fought him in the, in, in the darkest days when Jesus was in Gethsemane. The prince of this world. Who is the prince of this world? The Antichrist. Who is he? The prince of Asia. So he fought him and he bursted out of that body and he started fighting Jesus as the prince of Persia. And Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh. I, he has nothing on me. I know who he is. That's why he said the devil ended him. And he manifested in the battle in, in Gethsemane. And he, this is the end of the, the first coming of the son of perdition. Where did he end up? Hanging himself exploding out of that body. That thing got out. That old devil, the son of Lucifer. He got out and fought Jesus and they went down to the pit of hell and they fought in hell until he bound him and said, you won't come out until I, I'm coming back. When did he come back? I'll tell you when he came back. Right now. He came back. When the Jews returned to the land, he was released. 
He was born again. He was born. He, he was reincarnated back again. Why? Because Jesus could not come until the Jews returned to the country. And when he knew that Jesus was coming back to the land of Israel, he came in preparation. So now he is on the world scene. Let him that have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. Because we are in the battle for the control of this planet. The good news is God has already made you the king and the priest. Oh, glory. He has already declared you the king. He has already said, I am reclaiming this planet and I'm giving it to the seed of Adam and you won't take it. And the devil says, I will bring every demon in the pit of hell, every principality, every ruler of darkness. I will overwhelm mankind because I don't want you to take over this planet. But God says, go ahead. Remember when, when you came and you betrayed me? Didn't I tell you, go ahead? Go ahead and crucify me. Go ahead and bury me. But I'll tell you something, I'll rise again. Whew. I'll rise again. You know, this conflict is still going on between the Son of God and the Son of Lucifer. Now, Jesus identifying the Son of Lucifer, this is what he says. Jesus said unto them, he was telling them a mystery. Did I not choose you, the twelve? And one of you is, what does it say? He is, it didn't say one of you is of the devil. It says one of you is the devil. Because one of them was nothing but Lucifer looking at him. He says, I chose you, but one of you is not of the devil. No, he is the devil. He's come to check on me and the battle has been going on all these years. And he's here to check on everything. That's why he called him. One of you is the devil. He is the devil. He was the devil. He was the son of the devil himself, Lucifer, incarnate in human body. Think about it, going to church every day with Lucifer's son. And they're kind of checking out what's going on. I'm like, go ahead, Jesus. I'm after you. You think you're going you're gonna to get a church on the earth that's victorious, triumphant? I'm going to find out everything you're going to do, how you're going to do it. And Jesus said, go ahead and find out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you everything. Because I'm not afraid of what you're going to do. Because this thing is already rigged up. I know who you are. You've been hiding. All the disciples didn't know who he was because he looked human. He talked to human. He was like everybody else. But they didn't know, hey, inside that body was Mr. Lucifer. Wow. Wow. Totally counterfeit. Counterfeit humanity. A different DNA, a different bloodline. Reptilian, the seed of Satan on the earth. I'll talk about how many of those seeds of Satan are around because there's a whole lot of them. The 10 kings that will rule with the Antichrist, they're all reptilians. They, he is the head of all the reptilians. How many reptilians they were? We talk about that because there's a whole lot of reptilians. If you want more than English, aliens in the human body going to school with you, working beside you in real world, in America, in every nation, they're around. And I'll show you from scripture. They are not coming, they're around. They are, they are like every other American. They talk, they talk American, they look American, they live like Americans, they are English, they are Russians, they are Chinese, they are Africans, they are South Americans, they are everything, they are everywhere. The seed of Satan on the earth. The difference between the son of perdition is this actually the son of Satan. He is not just a fallen angel. He is the son of Satan. Satan manifesting himself. The, the other DNA, satanic DNA, is around. We'll talk about that. They have been around since the time of Adam and Eve. And they are still around today. May I make this clear? 
There's always been the seed of Satan on the earth. I'm, when I say that, I'm talking about not just rebellious Christians, rebellious people. Rebe oh, no, no. I'm talking about a different DNA. I'm talking about a different seed, the seed of Satan. They've always been around. Because the devil wants his seed to take over. God calls Abraham. He says to Abraham, look. It will take 400 years. Before I can bring you back. Why? Until the cup of iniquity has been filled. What was that? That was until the whole country has been taken over by the reptilian seed. They created Gehenna. You know Gehenna, where the fire was never quenched. Have you been to Jerusalem? The valley of Kidron, where Gehenna was. What was Gehenna for? Gehenna was for looking for every child that was Adamic was thrown into Gehenna. Every child that was not born of reptilian seed was burned in Gehenna. And God says to Abraham, in 400 years, it will be, the whole place will be taken over. That's why he told Moses, Joshua, he says, kill every one of them. Because they're not Adamic seed, they're a seed of Satan. That's why when they went into the land, what did they say? We have seen the Anakims. What is Anakim? It's come, it comes from a Sumerian word, Ananuki. What is Ananuki? Those who came from heaven, the sons of those who came from heaven, the Anakim, the sons of the Ananuki. We saw them, they were in the land. They call them the giants, but the word giant is not really accurate. The real word is the violent ones. Because they were violently killing the Adamic seed. We live with a strange seed among us. There is another seed. Not the seed of God. What's the plan? Very simple. God was going to establish his kingdom where? In Jerusalem. Where did the, the, the giants go? Jerusalem. What did they control? Jerusalem. He was going to bring his, his kids into the land of Canaan. Where were the giants? In Canaan. What were they waiting for? For the seed of God. So that they may fight them. Because we are in a conflict. It's the mystery of iniquity. Jesus said one of them is one of those reptilians. By the word reptilian, we mean they are able to change form in their original state. But once they are born, they cannot change form. Reptilians means demonic principalities that can change form into human form and marry the daughters of men and live among the daughters of men, the Ananuki. Those who came from heaven and had children. You call them the aliens if you want to. Now, when Jesus went into hell, he fought the son of Satan because the son of Satan is appointed to be the ruler of the earth. And Jesus is appointed by God to be the ruler of the earth as the son of Adam. As the seed of David. To sit on the throne of David. So the devil followed him when, when, he, when he died and the devil busted out of that body and he went and met him in hell to find him because he's fighting to rule this planet. And take it away from the seed of Adam. And Jesus came as a man. He became the, sons of, the son of men that we, the sons of men, may become the sons of God. That through him we may rule this earth. Through the Mashiach ben David, the son of David. Now, he put him in a time restraint. 
in the pit of hell. And here it is in scripture. The beast that you saw. This is John on the island of Patmos. AD 90. The sign of perdition has been around and it's called the beast. The beast. The son of perdition. Why is he called the beast? Reptilian. He's not human. He is a reptilian human. He's a form of Adam, stocks like Adam, lives on earth like Adam, but not of Adam's DNA, not of Adam's bloodline. That beast, the son of perdition, the beast that you saw was in the days of Jesus and is not because he died and he went back to his place and will ascend out of the bottomless pit where God, through Christ, restrained him when he took the keys of death and hell and he put him in locks in the bottomless pit. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You remember I said the prince of this world cometh and he has nothing on me and he got hold of that prince of darkness and he took him right into the pit of hell and he locked him right there and said, you shall not come out until the appointed time. That's the restraining order. It's a time restrainer. He's restrained him. So you cannot come back. You come back when I come back. So that is why he comes out from the bottom of the speech and go into, say the word, perdition. Who is he? Son of perdition. Who is he? The son of Satan. He comes out of the bottomless pit where Jesus left him when he rose again on the third day. And he said, I am the resurrection and life. And the prince of darkness, the prince of Persia, was bound and left in the bottomless pit. And when he comes back again, which he is back again. Are you with me? Where is he? He is back again. Where is he right now? On planet earth, back again. Where is he wanting to have a confrontation? In Yerushalayim. And all who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was the son of perdition and is not right now, AD 90, and yet he is. Because the Apostle Paul talks about it as the mystery of iniquity that was at work from the beginning, from, the book, from Genesis to the time of Jesus, and is still here working. How is the son of Satan going to be revealed in these last days? The scripture says in Thessalonians 2, 10, and with all unrighteousness. Are you looking at that? What is the next word? What is the next word? Oh, no, no, say it. What is the next word? Deception. Are we living in the days of deception? Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they may be saved. We are in the time of deception, disinformation. Because the devil is preparing this generation to take it over. Who are these people that are taking over? Because now I'm going to tell you that there is about to come in our day. The reptilian takeover of this planet. Jesus talking about this reptilian seed, the DNA of Satan. He says it in scripture. That's why I want to speak where scriptures speak. I want to be silent where scriptures are silent. Because it's all about scripture. Scripture gives us insights into mysteries that have been hidden through the ages. The rational man cannot understand revelation. The deep calleth unto the deep. 
But while men slept, his enemy came and saw tears among the wheat. Tears are the DNA of Satan, a DNA of fallen angels. Those are the tears. Human beings on planet that are tears, not of the Adamic seed, living among us, growing among us. Why? Because the devil, when he saw God seated men in the Garden of Eden, he decided he would also seed his own people on the planet in order to overwhelm the seed of God and take over from the seed of God and replace it with his seed. His enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the, when the grain had spouted and produced a crop, then the tears also showed up. Hallelujah. The, the tears are here. Now they were here at the time of Adam, during the time of Noah. And God has allowed the tears, the seed of Satan, to grow and to live among us. And right here it says it. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I'll say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into the burn. God says, you know, this is so important. He says, gather the seed, the DNA of Satan away from the nations of the earth and take them out. Who is going to be removed first? The seed of Satan, the DNA of Satan, the bloodline of Satan that's not redeemable. That unredeemable seed is going to be gathered in the end. In the end. When is it going to be gathered? At the end. Why is the sign of perdition come from the bottom of the speech to join the seed of Satan in taking over the planet? That's why it says one will be taken, one will be left what? Behind. He is going to take the, the, the tears first. That means the tears, the, the bloodline of Satan, is going to be taken out first before he gathered the wheat. Listen to me carefully. The tears will be gathered in the valley of Megiddo where he is going to destroy them. And the seed of Adam is going to live through this great crisis. They will be nations that are not born again. That will survive. The seed of Adam will survive what's coming. They will be here. We will rule over them because they will be here. But the reptilian seed that's among us will be removed. They won't exist in the millennium. That's why one will be taken, one will be left behind. Your friend that you think is like you, talks like you, lives like you, he is not one of you because God knows his own. He knows his DNA. And he's going to remove that DNA from the planet when he comes again and tell the seed of Adam that this is what I wanted. The millennium is to tell the seed of Adam, this is what I say to you in the Garden of Eden to rule this earth. His will will be done on earth against the will of the devil because his seed will be removed from among us. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We speak the deep things to those who are mature, the meat of the word. We pass the milk of the word. I want you to know, we better see a marvelous transformation of this earth. Because the Spirit of God is going to come upon the seed of Adam in measures that we have never seen before. And the devil is going to try to overwhelm the earth with his seed they will fight against the seed of Adam as they did during the time of Abraham, 400 years. 
They were there in Sodom and Gomorrah. You know why God hates homosexuality? Do you know who introduced homosexuality? The devil. He said to the seed of Adam, the women are ours because we want to have our only offspring on the earth. Men on men, women on women. Because he did not want Adamic seed to reproduce. Because he wanted to take over. That's why he burned all the Adamic seed in Gehenna. Now finally, I want to give you a scripture that tells you there will be a great percentage of the reptilian seed on the earth in the last days. Because Daniel tells us about it. And the age is in Daniel. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, ceramic clay represents the Adamic seed. Iron represents the reptilian seed. They will mingle with the seed of man. They will mingle with the seed of Adam. They will mix in with the seed of Adam. Look around the earth and see what's happening. There is another seed that's trying to mingle with the seed of Adam. But they will not adhere to one another. You wonder what's going on? Our values and their values. Their ways and our ways. They will mingle but not be able to adhere to each other because they are of a different, different DNA and different values, different purposes. They are seated among men to deceive men, to destroy men. Daniel sees them in the end of time. They will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another. Just as iron does not mix with clay. They are here, they can't mix with the Adamic seed, with the Adamic values. And in the days of these kings, the reptilian kings of the earth, the ten kings with their supermen, the Antichrist, the God of heaven will set up his kingdom. That means now, before the kingdom comes. They will try to mix with the sons of men. They won't mix. There will be a division in every nation, in every place. Because we are dealing with something bigger than the seed of Adam. But our hero is coming back. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. The seed of Adam and the son of David is coming. Hallelujah. We are about to see the king. And he's about to weed out those seed of Satan that won't be able to mix with us. And they will be consumed. And God will establish his kingdom. That will last forever. Now I want to close by telling you. That what happened. Before. Is what's happening today. Who is the Antichrist? He has been here. Has the takeover of this planet. Been attempted by Satan before. Through the Rapillion seed. Yes. Did he, he almost succeeded? Yes. And I'll give you the scripture. And I'll close with that as I finalize on identifying the origin of the Antichrist. Where he came from. Why he came. Why he's doing what he's doing. Who is helping him? The reptilian seed is helping him. The seed of Satan is working with him, trying to take over the churches, trying to take over the, the politics of the world, trying to take over the nations of the world in order to rule this earth without the, the seed of Adam. And they're doing it before the, the Lord comes back. Why is he coming back? 
Because as it was in the days of Noah, right here. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The days of Noah, what happened? Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, of all whom they chose. They were here taking over, taking all the women and having children, populating the earth, replenishing the earth with their seed, with a population explosion, population control of the Adamic seed, in order to exterminate all of Adamic seed and take over this planet, so this planet would belong to the seed of Satan. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with men forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years, 120 jubilee years, 6,000 years. God says, Men shall live on the earth from creation 6,000 years, and my spirit will no longer continue to strive with him. They were giants on the earth in those days and also afterwards. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they brought children to them, those were the mighty men. We were of old men of renown. Let me conclude by telling you what happened in the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, Noah was a king. In the book of, in the book of Enoch. He talks about Enoch was a king. And in these days, this reptilian race was growing faster than the Adamic race. And in the days of Noah, the only family that was not contaminated was the family of Noah because he was the king. And he only had his, his sons and their, 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 their wives, the only pure Adamic seed left on the earth. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. What I'm talking about is a takeover of the reptilian seed of the control of this earth. That's why the ten kings are with one spirit. What spirit? The spirit of the Antichrist. Who are they? They are reptilians in control of this planet. That's why Jesus comes back, say no more. Time out. That's why you split the heavens and stop the takeover of this planet. What will they do? They will tell all of the Adamic seed to take a number, a biochip, in order to change their DNA and their future. That they may be the seed of Satan. And those who deny to become part of the satanic takeover of this earth, the, the usurpation that's going to take place, the takeover of Satan on this earth, those who say no and believe in Jesus, they will be beheaded if they are not anointed. If they are not part of the manifestation of the sons of God who are appointed to rule and burn on the earth. In these days of the transition from the age of the church to the age of the kingdom. As the Antichrist takes over this earth and he took over in the days of Noah and God spared him. And you know what happened? Immediately after the flood... The angels came down, started taking the women. You read in the book of, of Enoch. And the children of, of Noah went to Noah and said, Noah, what was the point of God sparing us? Because the same reptilian seed is taking all our wives and having their seed again and they're taking over. That's why the Bible says the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Do you want to understand something? The apostle Paul 
He says, when you gather together, women must cover their heads because of angels. What angel? What are they doing in church? Why should the women cover their heads? Because these angels, fallen angels, were going to church to look for women to take over. And that's why it says women must cover their heads because of these angels that are coming in human form to attend church to look for women. Have you ever wondered why the Muslim women all cover their heads and leave only their eyes? Do you know where that came from? Because of the multitude, the multitude of these fallen angels in the region that men had to cover their women and cut out all near their eyes so that these fallen angels would not be able to capture them and attack them. That's why the Apostle Paul says women must cover their face because of the angels. What angels? Fallen angels, reptilians on the earth in the church. And in these final days, they're going to try to take over. But the sons of God, the manifested sons of God, will rise on the earth. Ooh, the generation of the overcomers. The greatest generation is here. The church in its glory. The church anointed. The church walking in majesty and power is here. Because God will stop the fire of hell with the fire from heaven. Because now we are in the days of the confrontation between the reptilian seed and the seed of God. Oh, there is a born again seed, a holy seed that God has got on the earth to fulfill the vision that he made to Adam and Eve. That you will rule this planet. Through the son of David, we will rule and reign together with him for a thousand years. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the sons of Adam will rule this earth because we're in the days of the reclamation of this earth. I want every eye closed. 